after a disastrous weekend, West Ham take on Manchester United at the London Stadium on Sunday. It's the big match preview. Joining me tonight, Nicky, how are you doing, mate? A bit better. <laughs> I've been better. Uh, that was a pretty gruesome weekend for me, I won't lie. <laughs> Uh, we'll be telling you a bit why later, but yeah, it's it's not good at the minute, Scott. It's not good at the minute. So okay. yeah, let's you know we need to start getting into this one because this is an important game. I think, mate. I, I'll be totally honest. I think this is a huge game. There's a lot of pressure riding on Lopetegui after the weekend's results. Well, the weekend result and the performance, you know, it just wasn't mm. up to scratch. So this this game now is huge. Yeah, absolutely massive. Um, they're under their own pressures, Man United. You know, I mean, it, it was uh, that many was touting the other day. I was keeping my eye on it as we was doing the post-match pint because they were playing just after just after we was playing, and they were one nil down to Brentford at one point at home. And I think that would have been the end of mm. Ten Hag. And I was, I, I'll be honest, like, and I know it's a bit strange. I was begging and pleading that they get back into the game and win the game yeah. because I think to myself, like, you don't want him getting sacked before he gets to us because the pressures will really be mounting. You know, mm-hmm. Man United are a big sight. Let's make no, no no mistake about that. They're a big side. They've got some big players. They've just had some rotten sort of principles in their club. And I don't think the manager's right for them. I don't think the manager's right for us at the moment, you know. Mm-hmm. So both managers are going to want to prove something this week. And it's, you know, we didn't want them coming here with a new manager bounce, that's for sure. Um, because it would have been put some real pressure. You know, listen, Tottenham's not, not an easy game. Not cool. Tottenham is never an easy game. That is... For damn sure, you know they, they. You know when they get going, there's two. There's two Tottenham's that turn up. There's the Tottenham that turn up at Man United last week, and then there's the Tottenham that turn up at Brighton. The Tottenham that turn up at Man United turn up at our place. Yes. Um, well, their place and, and played us. You know, listen. Uh, I did say, you know, after the game that I didn't think it was that bad. When I look back at it, it was a bit worse than I thought. Yeah. Do you know what, mate? Like when we're looking back at that, you know, it was it was there was a lot of things that went wrong, a lot of disasters there. And I thought for me personally, this was the first time where Lopetegui didn't really make the substitutions quick enough. You know, I think I think there should have been changes yeah. at half time and he, he took his time to do it. I mean, he's gung ho, you know. Uh, we've spent the last couple of years really complaining about Moise's lack of substitutions and lack of squad and all that. He just don't I think he makes so many substitutions because I don't think he knows his best side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's yeah. still struggling to, and and looking for the best side. And I, and and I think there's 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 a couple of signings. I think like Rodriguez. I didn't think Rodriguez was that bad against Spurs. No, but I think he's trying to squeeze them in. You know, he's trying to make sure that then that you know they're his signings and he wants them in the side. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's trying to take him into the Premier League, which is a double edged sword, really, because you can't be getting beat like that. You no. know, that was a. Listen, they're open, Spurs. They're open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. on paper, we have got the attacking players to, to trouble them. And and we did trouble them at times. You know, no matter... And listen, I've heard so many people this week saying, oh, you said it wasn't that bad. It could have been six or seven. Well, you know, my auntie could have been my uncle. But she weren't. She was my aunt. You know what I mean? It was four. Yeah. And that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they had chances. We had chances. It was open. We got behind them many times. We just didn't capitalise. Our set pieces are not good enough. Mm-hmm. We didn't capitalise. And we had that mad 10-minute spell where it looked like we was dancing on ice. Yep. Yeah, we yeah, could yeah. not keep hold of the ball. We was all over the fucking shop, especially defensively. I think I've heard Manuel Lopetegui by trade is a goalkeeper coach, which is fucking <laughs> shocking when you see how bad our goalkeeper is. I know. You know? I know. And, and, and do you know what? we got... No, when you, say, when you look at the weekend results, you know, you look at that Brentford game, Anana, yo, know, pulled off some great saves to keep um, United in the game, and it, and it just goes to show the difference. And, and like you said, the cutting, the cutting edge that Spurs had that we didn't. Manchester United are very open. You know, we, we've, we've yes. seen this; they're yes. very Jekyll and Hyde. But we've got to capitalise, mm. and we've got to get the balance right. We've got to get the team right. Listen, that Kudus red card. Um, We'll be talking about that in a minute. But that Kudus red card, um, you know, it could be six games now. You know, I, I haven't heard the news today. I'm looking I'm looking for the news. I'm going to do a video tomorrow about it. Yeah. Um, it's called The Breakdown. Um, I've been working on it. Uh, I was meant to bring it out. It, it, it's going to come out Mondays. Mm-hmm. Um, but this week, because we're, we're, we're looking at the format, I'm going to bring it out tomorrow. Um, but it's called The Breakdown. And it breaks down sort of like the comments and everything of the weekend. 
when I look back at the at the at the game, it was what can I say? It was like the rest of them were having a stroll in the park, and Kudus was running around like a fucking maniac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's trying to make something happen. Yeah. I don't think Kudus. This is this is only my personal opinion. I don't think Kudus is too happy with a manager. I'm not, he's not too happy with the style of play. He's not too happy with a balance of play. Um, we don't we don't seem to have anything in the middle of the park, nope. right? Nope. So it's going from you know, to Debo. God rest his God rest his soul. God bless his soul. <laughs> um, God, actually, God rest his soul after the run around that fucking Sonny gave him the other day. But um, you know, he came in. He looked. He looked like he was going to be the difference. He's got no protection now. Yeah. You know, there's there's no balance there. Alvarez has got to play. Yeah. Alvarez yeah, yeah. has got to yeah. play this week. If he doesn't play, we're in big trouble. I think. Um, because when, once that you know that middle of the park it opens up, you know, I call this a donut. Yeah, the yeah. Other day. I've, I've I said you call this a donut. I've heard people call this a bagel. Yeah, you know, and and for me, I felt felt sorry for Rodriguez. You know, he, he was in there on his own. Pacatar was spent more time diving around on the ground than he did anything else. Suchek wasn't wasn't at the races, and and I'm I'm with you with Kudus. I don't think Kudus is particularly too happy at the minute, and it, I it's think it's been. Been you got people like Pakatar who's playing in a ten. He could probably be playing a ten. We could get Somerville out on the left, Bowen out on the right. Whoever, well, it's got to be Antonio up front at the moment, yeah. unless he wants to play Bowen. Yeah. You know, we have got options. We have got options. And Somerville, listen, I don't think he's been too impactful, but I think there's something about Somerville. There's something about Somerville. If he gets going, he can get going. Kunis is playing out on the left out of position. You got Bowen and Pakatar, who look, I, I thought Bowen played okay mm-hmm. the other day. I don't think spectacular. Uh, uh, again, the, the sending off for me, captain material, he should, is not. No, should have done the other captain dragging Kudus away, yeah. stopping himself from um, getting him, I, I, himself in more trouble than he already was. Um, and he was out standing there fucking arguing and fighting with other people himself. That's not captain. You know, captains drag your players away from trouble and then they take and, they, and then they front it themselves. He wasn't doing that. Mm-hmm. That's that's my opinion. Um, that's weighing him down a little bit. But Pakatar, and uh, listen, I know he's got a lot going on, and I know he's got a lot riding on it. But if this is your last fucking six months in football, start playing fucking football. Exactly. Because what he's looking to me, looking like to me, Scott, is he's strolling around in a fucking park, and people like Kudus are running around like lunatics trying to make something happen. Kudus, listen, Kudus ain't been brilliant all season, mm. but he's the only one that's trying to make something happen proactively. Yeah. If we got people around him doing the same thing, we'd be a good side. And he's getting frustrated with it. You can see he's getting frustrated with it. Yeah. And it- we, listen, he's got no choice now. You know, he's got to leave Kudus out this weekend, which is a fucking massive miss because he would give, you know, he would give their right back nightmares mm-hmm. or their left back. It would be their left back. But it isn't him and we have to find a way to win. That's it, mate. That's it. Before we touch on that, before we move on to a bit more talking about the United game on Sunday, um, obviously we had our second fan team challenge Last week, and um, right, let me. I will. Before I, um, before we do that, let me just grab one of these, mate, because I've got a little claret and blue cupcakes here. <laughs> this might be the last night I'm eating, but go on. <laughs> so yeah, so um, we had the challenge this week. It was won by Lola, so he finished top of the table. And um, how the fuck, how the fuck does that happen? By the way. <laughs> And uh, yeah, the Kudus, the Kudus sending off was the curse for Nicky as he finished bottom of the league. And he faces mm. this week's forfeit, which we will be putting live on uh, Friday Night Pint. Um, <laughs> Nicky will be doing a Bush Tucker trial. It's one of the ones of the eating challenges. So he'll be eating things like worms, locusts, crickets, and a few other... Uh, Creepy, crawly, and disgusting things. <laughs> You're looking forward to that one, mate? Scott, <laughs> you know me. More than anyone in in this group. Things like that turn my stomach, <laughs> and you know it does. You know, I remember, just quickly, years ago, me and Graham having a conversation about a certain film, yep. a certain something on a certain film, and it makes me my stomach turn. I cannot stand anything like that. And when I've heard some of the things that they've got lined up for me, 
that's why it's a forfeit, I guess. That's yep. why it's a forfeit. It, mate, mate. I, I remember when we went and watched Jackass, the movie, at the cinema. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I can't, I'm, I'm, I've got a weak stomach. I know that sounds fucking ridiculous. I know Sam's saying, like, the eating challenge is the worst one for me, yep. which is ironic, but honestly, and these haven't been pre-selected, by the way. These have been... These are just the way they feel. Yeah, that was the worst one for him. This is the worst one for me. Yeah, I hope it's not it's not me again next week no. because this one's going to turn my stomach. No, fingers crossed. And obviously, all the details of how you can play um, the fan team will be in on Friday night. Pine. It would be. Um, Go on. Back to, I know it was the West Ham Central game last week. It would be the big pick six again this week. A share of ten thousand um, pounds. Get an early sign in uh, for those of you who signed up last week. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, we only scored one goal, so you will get a ticket to play this week. And it's the same offer once again. Um, how many goals West Ham scored this week? You will get tickets for the future games, or, or not just the future games. You can play any game along. Mm -hmm. But um, if you want to get uh, in early, sign up there. But we, all the details will, again, be on Friday Night Pine. But there we go. Thank you for Fan Team for sponsoring. But I don't thank you for the forfeit I'm about to do. <laughs> That's it, mate. That's it. So, again, looking, at, looking ahead to Sunday, you know, United coming in... Uh, with with what you that were really nice. sorry mate that cupcake <laughs> is really nice. What you, what you were saying with 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 the new manager bounce, it seems to be United when when Ten Hag needs a result, he gets a result. And I'm like you, I'm quite pleased they got that win last week. You know they play obviously Thursday night in the Europa League. They're going, I think they're away to Fenerbahce. Then we go to Istanbul. Yeah, I think, I think you're going to Turkey. Yeah, I yeah. think they're going to Turkey. Yeah, so I think it's get, get, it might be going, I can't remember who it is, but they've got to travel to Turkey. So that we know yeah. through history, that's not an easy place to go. So they've got that game now. They're going to come to us. Hopefully we can hit them with a bit of the European hangover. You know, I think when you look at it as well, for a change against Manchester United, stats are on our side, mate. I know stats, you know, they're just there for the eye test and all that, as, as we've heard. But, you know, Back-to-back -back wins against United at home, something that we're not used mm. to seeing. You know, two clean sheets on the spin for us at home against United as well. So we've got to be, I know, look, different eras and all that, but we've got to be confident. We just need them changes into that midfield, I think, to strengthen it up a little. You know, Ganacho's sure. in great form for them. He's For me, he's the player to keep an eye on. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I, I'm uh, uh, unbelievable form, Ganacho, uh, when you think about the form that everyone else is in. But, as you said, different eras. You know, this is a very important game. It's mm -hmm. not just because it's Man United. Could be Arsenal. Could be Man City. Could be anybody. You know, this is an important one because we are starting to teeter on the edge of, you know, going to Forest next week. You know, we don't want to be too far away from Forest and teams right. like that because that is when you start going. And I, know, I mean, no disrespect to Forest, they're being in good form mm -hmm. themselves. Start to sort of get into that. Well, we're nearly at 10 games now. We've only got eight points. Blah, blah, blah. All these teams are pulling away. The only thing that's probably done us a favour is the poor form of Palace, Southampton, and um, tell me the other one. Sorry, um, I can't remember. Ipswich. Ipswich. Yeah. Uh, it's probably the only thing that's keeping us up, up at the minute. But, you know, as you look at with Everton, you know, they went four games and they'd never won a game in the first four games. Yeah. They chucked away two, two goal leads. They're on the same points as us now. You know, and they, they, you know they've had a fucking bad start. Mm. Yeah. A lot of people backing them. Well, this is going to be their year. Same points. So we've got to get a win this week at home, especially going away to Forest. Um, massive game, mm. huge game, yeah. um, in my opinion. And uh, you know, we, we've seen rumours about. I think they're just rumours as well. I don't think the ball are going to release anything like this yet. But the name that they've got lined up to take over. Doesn't fill me with fucking joy, to be quite honest with you. Um, you know, we've already had him here. I remember him, the curly hair geezer warming him up. I can't That's even remember it. his fucking name. Yeah. Um, but you know, it, it doesn't, you know, fill me with 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 much confidence. No. But Lopetegui has got to start winning these games. He's got to start winning at least the home games mm -hmm. um and stop getting crushed away from home. Otherwise, you know, the place is going to turn toxic again. But it, once you've lost that crowd, yeah. as David Moyes see, there's no winning them back. No, and, and and this is the thing, and this is why it's such a key fixture, you know, because like you said, we've got, we've got two games coming up that are not easy fixtures as well. You know, so you need to be going into this and, and, and just hoping things go your way. You know, for me, as I said to you earlier, he needs to strengthen the midfield. You know, I, I'm, I, yeah. I think we, when, when, when I'm looking at the starting 11, the goalkeeper in the back four have got to stay the same. 
you know, big, big game for wan yeah. up against his old club as well. I don't know. I disagree on a goalkeeper, Scott. I disagree on a goalkeeper, absolutely. I think Fabianski comes in. You reckon? Yeah. I think, I think so. I think he has to. Oh, that's what I would do. Yeah. Ariola hasn't filled me with confidence at all. But go on, you give your start, Levin, I'll give mine. Yeah, so no, for me, I'd stay with the same back five. Um, but I'd bring Alvarez into the middle alongside Rodriguez to try and just give us a bit more steel in the midfield. But he also needs to needs to calm his temperament a bit. When you look at the, the Tottenham game Sunday, right, and you look at all that melee at the end. One of the most mm-hmm. calm sperm players, calm Spurs players, sorry, was Romero, who who is normally the hothead, the one that gets sent off all the time. You know, and and when you look at Alvarez, okay, he hasn't got as many sending offs, but he's always on a booking. He's always on a booking. He's always on a, that risk of a last tackle, and he needs to show a bit of composure and a bit of calmness. And I think if he can do that alongside Rodriguez in the midfield, for me, I bring Soler into the midfield. You know, Pakatar's not done enough, and I'm a massive, massive fan of Pakatar, but he's not done enough. And Suchek, after that performance, should be dropped. You know, that's definitely. I, I, I agree with Celia, but I would bring Alvarez in alongside Pakatar in that deeper role. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Good so shout. I'm going to go Fabian, same, same, um, uh, so I think the same back four, four. Yeah. The defensive back four. I don't, I don't, I don't think that changes. Um, Fabianski goes in goal for me because, you know, he got beat at his near post again against Kulazewski. And I know a lot of, you know, we, we spent the night with Jimmy Walker Friday mm. and I know Jimmy Walker saying, you can't always blame goalkeepers for getting a beat in a big post. But I'll tell you what I can blame him for. He's leading with his feet. That was a tame, tame shot by Son. Yeah. That was a tame shot. He could have just fell on that and he's leading with his feet. He's doing that a lot. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. I don't know why he's leading with his feet, but he's doing that a lot. I would bring Fabianski in. Fabianski is a tried and tested for me. Listen, I don't think he's the greatest goalkeeper anymore. Um, I just caught up with him a little hmm. bit, but I think he's a little, you know, I think just for calm heads, yeah. you know, Fabianski's got that calm head. Um, same back four. I would bring in Alvarez and I would bring in Pakatar. And the reason why I want Pakatar in that midfield is I want him to get involved a little bit more. I want him to get on the ball a little bit more in deeper areas, you know, not be wandering around up front hmm. or, or in, in the front third, just waiting for the ball to come to him. I want him to get in because he does like to get stuck in. Scott, yeah. And he likes a yellow card, yeah, as, yeah. As, yeah. you know, as he does. You know what I mean? Like he can get stuck in now, but I think he gives a bit, little bit more quality. He can spread the ball out. He can spread the play. And you've got two ball playing midfielders then mm-hmm. in Soler and Pakatar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's what we need to get our foot on the ball in the midfield. We was losing the, too many midfield battles. We was losing too many midfield, um, uh, you know, we was giving it away too much trying to pass it out of midfield. Somerville's got to come in on the left. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Bowen plays on the right. As I said, Soler in the 10. It's got to be Mickey Antonio. It's got no other choice. Yeah. That's it, mate. You know, like, you know, he's not going to play two up top. We've not, we, we're not going to do that. You know, and it's got to be Mickey. And I think we've... Got to. Got to. I, I would actually stick Danny Ings up there, but yeah. that's me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but the thing is, is, is when, when, you look at, when you look at Somerville... Somerville is an out and out left winger. Yo, know, so he's gonna need to yeah. he's gonna need a target in the box. And this is where Mickey's gotta be not drifting out to the left. Mickey has got to make sure he's a focal point of that attack so that when Somerville does beat his man, and he normally does get the beating of the fullback, he's got someone to whip across into. You know, <laughs> that's that's why that's why I will play Ings. Yeah. Because what Somerville has got the ability to do, listen, I haven't seen a lot of Somerville's crossing. <laughs> and then when I have, there's been no one on the end of yeah. it. It's the same West Ham. But what Somerville can do is he's got the pace to get behind and get to the byline. He gets to the byline and swings it back. I want Danny Ings there rather than Mikel Antonio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's a good shout, mate. It's a good shout. And and the thing is, something's got to give eventually. Something's got to change. And it's it's little things in footballs can ignite something. And that that you know, that sending off that that melee at the end of that game could ignite us in, and kick us into action. Yeah, it's it's one of them things where it, it it may have been like you come up the end. You know, I've heard it before, like the, the relegation season, the Great Escape season. They got a pound in at, at Charlton, I think, mm-hmm. and um, you know, they went in the dressing room and they just fucking had it out with each other, and they it, it all got sorted out, it yeah. all got dished out, and they all, you know, they they all started sort of pointing the fingers at each other and and, and bringing it, and they all come together after. That's what it needs. It needs something mm-hmm. like that. So maybe that top result could get that out of them. If they don't. It's going to be trouble. Yeah. There's going to be trouble. Because yeah. if we lose this week, 
I can't see us winning next week. No. And that, and that's the thing, mate. It's it's then you're then you're scratching around where the points are gonna come from. But yeah, you know, I, I think Sunday opening 20 minutes is key. We've got to be tight, we've got to be strong. Yeah, you know, we can't afford to concede early. Um, you know, when we look at score predictions, I, I think it's gonna be a draw this one. I'm I'm gonna go a two two for this one. What do you reckon, mate? Um I'm going to go for a 2-1, but just because we need to win. Need to win? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a good shout, Need mate. to win. It's a good shout. We need to win, and we need to find a way to win. If it ain't 2-1, I think we could get an end up, We could end up on the end of a pounding. Mm. But I'm going to go 2-1. No, it's a good shout, mate. It's a good shout. It's, look, look, United, we know, have got the potential to do that. They've got some quality, quality players, but... <laughs> I just, I just think you, I, I'm with you. I think this is a key game now, and I think sometimes we needed that result against Ipswich. We got the result against Ipswich, and I'm just thinking now we need this result. I can see us going to get it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah Nick, absolutely. thank you very much for joining me. Um, I'm looking forward to Friday night, mate. It's going to be great. So make sure you check out Friday Night Pint. We'll be back um, with all the build up and all the aftermath of the Man United game on Sunday. So make sure you check out all the videos. And uh, one thing left to say, mate. Thanks. Oh, thanks to Fan Team for sponsoring this video. But one thing left to say. Come on, you irons.